Hello and welcome to tier 2 of The Feminist Iceberg. This is part of a series, so if you didn't catch the first one, please make sure you watch that one as well. This tier includes things that you've probably heard of within feminism but don't know a lot about, or you didn't know were intrinsically feminist. The fourth wave of feminism is a period of political activism and social change, seeking to expand women's civil rights and social equality. Preceding the first, second and third wave movements, it takes on distinct characteristics, priorities and postures towards the dominant social and cultural forces of its time. Although the third wave hasn't actually had an official end, activists recognise that the 21st century has ushered in a new type of activism activism, which has came to be known as fourth wave feminism. Continuing to advocate for their rights, a constant concern across all of the waves of feminism was their access to reproductive health care. There have been various controversial legacies that often prevent women from achieving full autonomy when it comes to their reproductive health, so the National Organisation for Women organised several marches to fight against restrictive legislation and advocate for women's reproductive rights. Part of the fourth wave, Time's Up was a campaign that launched in Hollywood to contribute to the widespread surge of women's activism. In response to a letter of support from 700,000 women farm workers, Time's Up publicly launched on January 1st, 2018, with their own open letter signed by over 300 women in the entertainment industry. The letter was published in the New York Times and thanked the farm workers who supported them. It announced that they would be using their network and platforms to advocate for survivors of harassment and injustice. Time's Up Women said enough is enough and created a movement that insists upon a world where work is safe, fair and dignified for women of all kinds. This followed the court proceedings of 2018 where Professor Christine Blasey Ford testified against a US Supreme Court nominee for sexual misconduct. Ford declared that Brett Kavanaugh attempted to her at a house party when they were teenagers. Ford chose not to report the incident for decades and wanted to remain anonymous due to fear and the trauma of the assault. However, she ultimately chose to speak out, along with two other women, Deborah Ramirez and Julie Swetnick, also accusing Kevin Hall of sexual assault in the past. Despite their testimonies, Kevin Hall was still confirmed as a Supreme Court Justice. In response, women rallied the feminism campaign Believe Women, with the popular dating app Bumble, known for its women-centric approach to matching potential partners, deciding to take out a full-page ad in the New York Times with just two words printed, Believe Women. Their campaign praise was a call to believe women such as Ford, Ramirez and Swetnick who decided to come forward about sexual assault. Woman with an X is an alternative spelling to woman or women that was proposed as a way to reclaim the identity of womanhood as inclusive and intersectional whilst not being defined in relation to men. It has been pronounced as womanx or simply in the same way as woman or women. The term appeared in writing during the second wave feminist movement of the 19th 70s, and aimed to reclaim and express a more emancipated womanhood through removal of the men slash man at the end of each word. It has appeared with other variations which will be spoken about in lower tiers, but it has only really picked up in terms of attention in the last 10 years due to current social movements. The majority of people, however, do not see this spelling in light of its original meaning. There are many valid and important reasons that people may choose to use the word women with an X to describe themselves. However, when the term is ascribed to trans women or non-binary people without their consent, it can become problematic. The use of the spelling has often alienated trans women and non-binary people, either by signifying the difference between trans women and cis women, or by forcing womanhood on non-binary people who don't identify with it. It inclines that trans women are not women, but are rather a different type of woman, which comes off as exclusionary, especially 
actually, when there is another term further down the tier list, specifically used by transphobic feminists, that is linked with the term woman with an X. Pop feminism refers to a more palatable, populist and comforting form of feminism that appeases the society and those in power. It is a non-academic approach to feminism that is used to capitalise on the feminist discourse without addressing political, cultural or institutional biases. Pop feminism also mainly focuses on cishet, white, upper class, non-disabled and neurotypical women. It is an approach to feminism that is predominantly promoted by young women, particularly social media influencers, who transform feminist ideologies into content that can be understood and absorbed on a larger scale. It is aimed to move away from the previously labelled hairy legs, bra burning misandrists to become more likeable and accessible to the masses. However, the movement comes with a conflict of thought. Critics have labelled it feel-good feminism, marketplace feminism, foul feminism, the list goes on. Pop feminism has been argued to excuse misogynistic, sexist and oppressive behaviour under the guise of individual preference. Commodity feminism refers to the way that feminist ideas and icons are appropriated for commercial purposes, emptied of their political significance and offered back to the public in a commodified form, usually through advertising. Paying homage to Marx's notion of commodity fetishism, the term is often framed within contemporary Marxist and feminist terms. Commodity feminism was developed and articulated by Goldman, Heath and Smith in a 1991 essay. The essay noted that femininity is used to marginalise and oppress women. They argued that terms that bear the meanings of individual freedom and independence associated with feminism are advertised as achievable through making the right consumer choices. Women of Colour Feminism is a form of feminism that seeks to clarify and combat the unique struggles women of colour face. It's a feminism that struggles against intersecting forms of oppression in opposition to white feminism that fails to fight against racial oppression and excludes intersectional issues. And so white feminism describes feminist ideals that focus on the struggles of white women whilst ignoring the distinct form of oppression that minority women face. An intersectional feminist understands how women's overlapping identities, including race, class, ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation and disability status, impact the way they experience oppression and discrimination. Choice feminism is the belief that the individual choices of a woman are inherently feminist. It seems to promote the opposite of infighting within the feminist community by uniting women under the pretense of choice. According to choice feminism, a stay-at-home mother and a businesswoman are equally feminist because they have both exercised the right of choice and therefore express their individual freedom. However, a fatal flaw of choice feminism is the assumption that the choice is something that everyone has. Thus, ironically, the positive impacts of choice feminism don't reach all women. Instead, choice feminism really only benefits a small minority of extremely vocal, privileged women, particularly white feminists. Taking its theoretical bearings from Marxism, Marxist feminism is a type of feminist theory in politics that notably criticises capitalism as a set of structures, practices, institutions, incentives and sensibilities that promote the exploitation of labour, the alienation of human beings and the debasement of freedom. For Marxist feminists, empowerment and equality for women cannot be achieved within this framework of capitalism. Chicana feminism is a socio-political movement in the United States that scrutinises the historical, cultural, spiritual, educational and economic intersections impacting Chicana identities. It rejects the traditional household role of the Mexican-American woman, demanding women to challenge institutional social norms that contribute to stereotypes and oppressions of their ascribed identities. Chicana feminism is a movement, theory and praxis that encourages women to reclaim their existence between and among the Chicano movement and the American feminist movement. Radical feminism is a philosophy that emphasises the patriarchal roots of inequality between men and women, or more specifically, the social domination of women by men. Radical feminism views the patriarchy as dividing societal rights, privileges and power primarily along the lines of sex and as a result oppressing women and privileging men. Radical feminists seek to reorder societal structures to ensure male supremacy is eradicated to create equal and fairer societies. They are also associated with man-hating and extremist views but by definition
definition, that is not what they stand for. It's difficult to pinpoint the first use of trans feminism, but the term has been used since the mid-90s, incorporating the goals of feminists and anybody else whose gender identity cannot be neatly boxed within the binary definitions, trans feminists aim to redefine rigid understandings of what it is to be a man and a woman. Trans feminists aim to rewrite socially constructed notions of gender to liberate individuals to express their gender identities free from oppression and discrimination. The overall strategic aims of trans feminism are centred around challenging patriarchal and heterosexual structures to create a more equitable society. English radical Mary Wollstonecraft voiced opposition of previous thinkers that cited the physical differences between sexes to justify the social inequality between women and men by arguing that mind has no gender. In the late 18th century, she argued that if men and women are given the same education, they will acquire the same good character and rational approach to life because they have fundamentally similar brains and minds. She demanded that women be treated as equal citizens to men, and though this was still largely true treated with contempt in her time, it did sow the seeds of the suffragette and feminist movements that were to flourish in the 19th and 20th centuries. J.K. Rowling is the author of the Harry Potter series, however in this iceberg it probably refers to the media storm caused by J.K. Rowling's views on the validity of transgender people. On June 6, 2020, Rowling retweeted an op-ed piece that discussed people who menstruate, apparently taking issue with the fact that the story did not use the word women. Women. This was actually one of the first videos that I posted on YouTube. Facing backlash, Rowling then doubled down, writing a 3,500 word essay filled with popular turf talking points. JK has made multiple points since then, furthering her trans exclusionary views. Turfism is the belief of trans people held by the trans exclusionary radical feminists. Turfs are a subset of radical feminists who believe that gender and sex are the same. Turfs do not accept trans women as women and many TERFs express a desire to keep women-only spaces for women only, by which they mean only for cisgendered women. r slash gender critical was a subreddit with 64,400 users. It was self-described as Reddit's most active feminist community for women-centered radical feminists to discuss gender from a gender critical perspective. The subreddit frequently hosted posts asserting that trans women are not women. On June 29th, 2020, the subreddit was banned for violating Reddit's rule against promoting hate. Feminazi is a derogatory term for a radical feminist. A feminazi is an exaggerated description of a woman's rights advocate so passionately committed to fighting for gender equality that she is harshly domineering, dictatorial, or an intolerant person. It is both used to describe feminists that detractors view as having radical aims, some being equal rights and reproductive rights, or to describe a feminist who is intolerant of opposing views and seeks superiority of women over men. Womanism refers to a social and ecological change perspective that emerged out of Africana women's culture and women of colour around the world. The social theory is based on the history and everyday experiences of black women and seeks to restore the balance between people and the environment slash nature and reconcile human life with the spiritual dimension. Writer Alice Walker first coined the term womanist in a short story, Coming Apart, in 1979. Since its initial use, the term has evolved to envelop a spectrum of varied perspectives on the issues facing black women. In its simplest sense, autonomy is about a person's ability to act on his or her own values and interests. Autonomy is usually understood by feminist writers in the same way that it is understood within moral psychology. Agency is the ability to take action or choose what action to take. In feminism, it refers to the capacity of women and girls to take purposeful action and pursue goals free from threats of violence or retribution. Attribution. Essentialism is the assumption that people have a fixed nature, such as a belief that all women are emotional. Neo-feminism is an emerging view of women as becoming empowered through the celebration of attributes perceived to be conventionally feminism. That is, it glorifies womanly essence over claims to equality with men. Whereas feminism advocates for equal rights for all genders, neo-feminism is the glorification of women. In layman's terms, it's female 
supremacy. Purity culture refers to the view of discussion of things of a sexual nature outside the context of a heterosexual marriage as taboo. It defines a devotion to a strict heteronormative lifestyle that prohibits most physical contact with significant others as well as engaging in self-pleasure or holding lustful thoughts about another person that is not a spouse. Purity culture insists on female modesty and responsibility to shield boys and men from sexual temptation. Adaptive preferences are preferences formed in unconscious response to oppression. For example, according to John Alster's classic description of adaptive preference formation, a fox, after finding he can no longer reach some grapes, decides that he does not want the grapes after all. The fox adapts his preferences to what he perceives to be the options available to him. The feminist understanding of adaptive preferences has evolved to draw attention to preferences formed in oppressively limited circumstances. In this feminist understanding, adaptive preferences are not merely responses to disagreement between preferences and options, but result from limited options tied to oppression. Psychoanalysis is defined as a set of psychological theories and therapeutic methods, which originate from the works and theories of Sigmund Freud. The primary assumption of psychoanalysis is the belief that all people possess unconscious thoughts, feelings, desires, and memories. The term hysteria is used colloquially to mean ungovernable emotional excess and can refer to a temporary state of mind or emotion. However, it originates from the diagnosable physical illness in women during the 19th century. The basis for diagnosis operated under the belief that women are susceptible to mental and behavioural conditions, an interpretation of sex-related differences in stress responses. However, in the 20th century, it shifted to being considered a mental illness. Currently, most doctors practising medical medicine do not accept hysteria as a medical diagnosis. The blanket diagnosis of hysteria has been fragmented into a myriad of medical categories such as epilepsy, histrionic personality disorder, conversion disorders, dissociative disorders, or other medical conditions. Furthermore, lifestyle choices such as choosing not to get married are no longer considered symptoms of psychological disorders such as hysteria. Hysteria also has very sexist origins, with the word originally from the Greek word for uterus, implying that the condition is exclusively fault of being a woman or having a womb. Manterrupting refers to when a man interrupts a woman, especially excessively. This doesn't just mean a usual interruption that is just rude, but describes when a man continuously interrupts a woman or women in order to dominate a conversation, in quiet, silence, discredit, or reduce the agency of the woman or women with whom he's conversing. The important thing is, is that this is motivation-based. He's not just using it as a tactic to shut his opponent down, it also comes from a sexist bias. From a first glance, many may view men's rights activists, or MRAs, as the male equivalent to feminists, a group of people consisting of both men and women dedicated to the equality of the sexes. However, the history of the men's rights movement is complex, seeming to be fueled as much by genuine concerns for equality as disdain for feminism and women in general. Particular framed focuses by the group are custody rights, male suicide rates, and justice for male domestic abuse victims. Depending on who is asked, the movement is either seen as a refuge for abused men or a breeding ground for misogyny and anti-female violence. The Boys Club refers to a male-dominated organisation, usually in business, that excludes or mistreats women. The man is a slang phrase used in the United States that refers to the government or to other authority in the position of power. The phrase, stick it to the man, encourages resistance to authority and essentially means fight back or resist, either passively, openly, or via sabotage. Though oppression by the man may be experienced by anybody, regardless of gender, from a feminist perspective, the fact that the term man is used to describe authority highlights the social inequality between men and women, with man being seen as the default authoritative slash representative figure. Misandry, in its own most simple and convenient definition, is hatred, contempt, and 
prejudice against men. There are lots of discussions about misandry and the idea that it is an equal opposite to misogyny. Emma Watson is a Harry Potter star and British actress, but in terms of feminism, she was appointed UN Women Goodwill Ambassador in July 2014. Dedicating her efforts towards the empowerment of young women, Emma serves as an advocate for UN Women's He For She campaign in promoting gender equality. Created by UN Women, the United Nations Entity for Gender Equality and the Empowerment of Women launched He For She in 2014. He For She is a gender equality campaign that focuses on the inclusion of men and people of all genders to stand in solidarity with women, to create a bold, visible and united force for gender equality. The men of He For She aren't just on the sidelines but are working with women and with each other to build businesses, raise families and give back to their communities. Her story refers to the feminist efforts to write history with often neglected women's voices so that it includes women and their importance in the narrative. The word was coined by militant feminists in the US in the 1970s, although the standard word history is not, in fact, a compound of his and story, but derives from the Greek and Latin historia, meaning narrative. Social construction refers to sociological and psychological theories that social phenomena develop in particular social contexts. A social construct is a concept that exists not in objective reality, but as a result of human interaction. Some examples of this are money and countries, and in more feminist terms, you have the construct that is gender and gender role slash norms. And finally, affirmative action, or otherwise known as positive discrimination is a series of policies that aims to increase the opportunities provided to underrepresented members of society. And that's it for tier two. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching to the very end. Again, like the last video, please point out any things that you might want to deeper dive on. I got some positive feedback from this series, so I hope it's one that you guys will still enjoy as it goes on. And with that, I'll see you soon.